So what's going on guys? Uh, let's do this problem right here. The question is asking a student living in 3 times 4 times 4 dormitory room turns on uh, 100 watts fan before she leaves the room on summer day hoping that the room will be cooler when she comes back in the evening. Assuming all the doors and windows are tightly closed and disregarding any heat transfer through the walls and the windows determine the temperature in the room. So the question is asking to determine the temperature in the room when she comes back 8 hours later. Use specific heat values at room temperature and assume the room to be heat room to be at 100 kPa and 20 degrees Celsius in the morning when she leaves. So this is P1 and this is T1. Okay, so the question is asking to find the T2. And uh, since uh, this volume is constant, this is an isochoric process. So that's what that we know already. And then uh, we have this energy, uh, I mean heat energy is provided, right, in terms of watts. So let's see how we can do this problem. So first of all, if we have volume, um, isovolumetric or isochoric process, uh, we can use, since it's a constant volume, we can use Q as mcv delta t right so this is the equation we can use to find the q also we can find the q in another way like 100 watts fan so this means this means 100 watts mean 100 joules per second so we have 100 joules per second and this is good, like going for 8 hours this is on for 8 hours so 8 times in 1 hour we have 360 3600 second so we, we multiply this one by 3600 and if you multiply and get the final value that comes out to be 20, 2008 actually two, 288 0 thousand right thousand joule actually we have four zeros so four zeros Joule. Now to convert this into kilojoule, we can simply divide this one by thousand. That's going to give us two thousand eight hundred eighty kilojoule. So this is Q. Now uh, the question is asking to find the T two. Now we have the Q already. We can apply in this equation. We don't have the mass. Mass is not provided. CV is provided because at room temperature, CV is going to be this value, zero point seven one eight kilojoule per kilogram. So that's the reason we are using MCV. Otherwise, we use NCV delta T, right? If they give them more, we use NCV delta T. Here, we use MCV delta T. It depends on the situation. And then we don't have the mass. We don't. We have the temperature bound. So all we need is mass to calculate the temperature too. So let's see how we can find the mass. So here we have pressure, temperature in the initial condition, and let's say. Whether, let's see whether we can find using PV is equal to MRT. I'm using MRT because if you look at the R value right here, they have given in terms of gas. So that is kilopascal meter cube per kilogram. So if you see kilogram in the denominator, you can directly go ahead and use kilo, uh, MCV delta T. So not MCV delta T, MRT, right? PV is equal to MRT. So here we are trying to find m right here so do we have everything we have the pressure already we have the volume volume is constant so it's going to be same and m that's what we are trying to find r we know t we know in the initial condition so let's go ahead and find the m so here we have 100 kilopascal so let's rearrange this one first so this is going to be m is going to be equal to PV over RT, right? PV over RT, P is 100 kilopascal times the volume is going to be 3 times 4 times 4 meter cube divided by R that is 0 0.287 kilopascal meter cube per kilogram. Kelvin, right? And uh, then we have the temperature. We have to convert this one into Kelvin. Whenever we use ideal gas flow, we have to always con convert this one into 
Kelvin. All we have to do is simply add 273.15 to this. So that's going to give us 293.15 right Kelvin. And then uh, we have this kilo right here. We have to make sure whether this cancels, right? If you look at the denominator, we have this one in kilopascal. And we don't have any other kilo because we want the answer in kilogram. So that kilogram doesn't change anything. Like we are going to get the answer in kilogram. So that kilo doesn't matter. So these two kilo, since these two kilo cancels, we don't have to convert anything. So let's keep it as it is and solve this one. And if you plug this value in calculator, you will get 57.056 kilogram. So that's going to be the mass. Now we can go ahead and find the T2. Now let's rearrange this equation. So delta T is equal to Q over MCB. Delta T is same as T2 minus T1 is equal to Q over MCB. Therefore T2 is equal to Q over MCB minus T1. I mean plus T1 because with this minus T1, if I bring it to the other side, that's going to be plus T1. Let's plug all the values. We have the Q that is 2880 kJ divided by M that is 57.056 kg and then CV CV is 0 0.78718 kJ per kilogram Kelvin plus this temperature, that's the uh, initial temperatures, that is 293.15 Kelvin. Now we have to make sure this kilojoule cancels, otherwise we have to convert this one into joule. So here if you look at the CV value, this kilojoule, this kilojoule cancels, and this kilogram, this kilogram cancels, and we get the answer in Kelvin. And if you add them together, you will get 363.56 Kelvin. So this is equal to T2. If you convert this one into degrees Celsius, all you have to do is subtract 273.15. If you subtract that value, that's going to give you 90.41 degrees Celsius. And that's how we do this kind of problems. So the final answer is 90.41 degrees Celsius. I hope you guys find this video helpful. See you next time.